So there we got, is it who Ginger C? What's going on, bro? Yeah, Ginger C, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You go by that name only? Uh, yeah, GC, Ginger C. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, and how'd you get that name? Uh, my dad, bro, you know what it was? Um, I just, over time, decided that obviously I wanted to be a, a rapper when I was younger. Um, and I just said to my dad one day, um, I remember I was like flexing in the mirror in like fake gold and all that. <laughs> and I said to my dad, like, oh, if I was a rapper, like, what could my rap name be? And he just literally come up and he's like, Ginger C. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, well, your name's Callum, you're Ginger, mm. Ginger C. And I was like, all right. Didn't really think nothing of it. I went to school now and I said to all the people at my school, now nah, I'm going to be a famous rapper. Mm. And they sort of laughed a bit, you know what I mean? Turned it into a bit of banter. Yeah, and yeah. they said, all right. What's your, um, what's your name? What's your rap name? So I said, ah, oh, Ginger C. And it was all a bit funny at the time, you know what I mean? And then they started just calling me for like banter. And then gradually as life went on, that just actually became my nickname. Um, then it got shortened down to GC and everyone just called me that. I would have changed it because I've, I've thought over time to change my name to something a bit more serious. Mm. But because everyone sort of knew me from that name since I was a little boy, I kind of just stuck, yeah. No, I think it works. I think it's a good name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense, yeah. And where do you live? Where do I live? In Sheerness, bro. Is that Kent? Um, yeah, in Kent. Yeah. Um, it's a little island, um, not too far from here, like just outside of London, really. Just outside of like the Medway towns, so like Chatham, Gillingham, and all of that. But yeah, Sheerness, bro, yeah. I know it, yeah, because I live in Gillingham. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know Sheerness <laughs> so not like too that. far, yeah. Um, that, is it like Seaside? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like a watered down Brighton. Okay, right. like that. <laughs> I've got. I can't say it's watered down because I've got to represent the ends in it. Sheerness is, is a beautiful place, bro. Oh, well. um, but nah, um, it's kind of like yeah, watered down Brighton, bro. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't really see it as anywhere because I grew up there. But I suppose if you're not, I've seen people that have gone there that are like not from there, and they're like, oh, this place is brilliant. I don't really see that because obviously I, I live there. But yeah, nah, fair enough. Do you do you come down London much? All the time, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a lot of friends, a lot of family here. Um, so I find myself having to come here at least once a week, at least once a week, whether it be to just pick up a bit of some nice weed um, <laughs> or to go and see my family and friends and that, whatever. There's always a reason to come here at least once a week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you feel quite connected to London as well? Definitely, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does, that, does that portray in your music? I know the, the mixtape's called, is it London to Sheerness? London to Sheerness, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was what it was all about, bro, really, because my life does consist of literally going from London to Sheerness. So that was kind of the, the idea. And obviously there was a film put out called London to Brighton. Yeah. Nah, I didn't really fuck with that film too much. I thought it was a bit seedy. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't, no. It was a bit, it was a bit <laughs> leave it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's about like this guy that pimps out this chick and all that. I'm not really into all of that shit, bro. But what it was, what inspired me to do it was one of my favorite mixtapes by one of my favorite, art, my favorite artists, Wiz Khalifa. It was called Burn After Rolling. Yeah. And it takes after the film Burn After Reading. And then obviously Mac Miller done his mixtape Kids, Kicking Incredibly Dope Shit, which was after the, um, the film Kids, the, the, 90s, the, the uh, early 90s film. Mm. Um, so I was inspired by that and the way that they put clips of the film throughout it. And it was like a soundtrack to the film. Um, that inspired me quite a lot. So I thought, yeah, let me put a twist on London to Brighton, London to Sheerness and do it like that. So yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So you're a singer, rapper, songwriter? Yeah, yeah. I try, I, to be honest, bro, to start with, I was a rapper, but now I'm more a singer. I don't really do the, the rapping no more because I feel that like, the singing uh, appeals to like, a wider audience. Mm. So, yeah, the singing is more what I'm focusing on. And I feel like rapping is something that once you get to a certain level with it, you can't really get better at it. Whereas singing, you can. You can always elevate with singing. There's always... Um, new harmonies you can try out, new, yeah. vo new vocal pitches and that you can try out. Whereas rapping, there's only so many flows and so many styles you can do before. Once you've mastered it, you're only sort of, you know what I mean? You're not really getting better, you're just staying as good as you are, do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, I thought once I got to a level with rapping that I felt confident with, I thought, yeah, let me try with the singing and then, yeah, just gradually it's like evolved into that. Okay, so while we're talking about your work, have you got an album on the way as well? Yeah, um, I put out, a, 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 it was a mixtape, but um, mm. it was more like an album yeah. um, about four years ago called Modern Day Hippie. Um, and that done all right. That got, um, it was number one in Link Up TV's mixtape charts and all of nice. that. Um, it got like quite a good reception. Yeah. Um, so this, the next one's going to be the album and that's going to be um, Modern Day Hippie 2. And London to Sheerness was like the warm up for that. So okay, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And what kind of, what's your style? What's your genre? 
Um, I try and do a bit of everything, bro, but I'd like to think my style is more like trap wave. Mm. Um, like a wavy, trappy kind of vibe. Not drill, not quite hip hop, um, sort of somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we saying there's other artists that kind of take on that style as well? Uh, yeah, I listen to a few of them. So kind of like D-Block Europe mastermind and mm. people with the, with the auto-tune and the singing and that. And a lot of people say, oh, like auto-tune saves your singing. So like if, you, if you're shit at singing, yeah. you just put some auto-tune. It don't really work like that, bro. You know what <laughs> I mean? For, in order to sound good on auto-tune, yeah. you've still got to somewhat, you ain't got to be the best singer in the world, but you've somewhat got to be able to maintain a tune. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, I remember they said that about T-Pain and then he actually sang and it was mm. amazing. Yeah, you yeah, can, yeah, you yeah. can actually sing. Yeah. You've got to know what notes, what keys to hit for it to sound good. Otherwise, it's just going to sound a bit, you know what I mean? All muffled yeah. and that. So, yeah. <laughs> no, fair enough. And what's, what's LTS tour? Um, the London Sheerness tour. Okay, um, yeah. All right. So, basically, to promote uh, my mixtape, I just basically just toured the country, bro. Um, and it nice. weren't um, on purpose. What it was is I took a few bookings subconsciously and then I realised oh shit they're like all within a similar time frame of each other and they're nowhere near each other they're all around the country so I just thought alright let me do a bit more with this get a couple more show dates locked in and turn it into a um, like a tour so nice. yeah we done part one was through the summer we done like four shows in the summer and then we done like five shows in the winter part two of the tour and went around the country yeah yeah nice nice yeah have you got any other up and coming kind of plans to tour to, to drop any more work uh, not yet, bro. At the minute, it's just about the album, really, and pushing that and um, getting as much press as possible to, to push that um, and get that out there. Then after that, maybe see about a second tour, but yeah. Nice, nice. And you got a website as well? Yeah, um, moderndayhippymusic.com. Um, on there, I've just started up a little shop and that as well, so you can buy like a couple merch bits that I've put out. Um, you can buy an I Love ME12 t-shirt which is um, ME12 is my postcode. So anyone who reps Sheerness can sort of get involved. Because I feel like Sheerness is slept on mm. and not enough, and enough people that represent, you know what I mean? So I thought, yeah, let me be that person to sort of put out some merch and all of that. So that route. And then there was London to Sheerness um, tour t-shirts. They sold out pretty much straight away. There was only like 30 of them made. But then um, in the new year, 2024, I am starting up my own like lifestyle brand called Modern Day Hippie Music, which is like my thing. Nice. Um, logo t-shirts and that will be out in, in the, the next year, yeah, million percent. Nice, nice. All right, so talking about Sheerness, is there, is there a lot of talent there that we're missing? <laughs> you know what it is? There's a few people in, in Sheerness that have got talent, but they're not from Sheerness. They've just moved to Sheerness. Oh, okay, they're right, right. They're not from there. But um, obviously but M.R is quite a known... Yeah. artist um he's from sheerness um he's helped me out a lot and, and taught me a lot over the years um mm. and he, he's from sheerness apart from that bro not really you've got my guy rumor my guy rids um my guy slows there's a few but they yeah they, they can rap million percent my guy jack the lad as well i can't forget him there's mm. a few people yeah that are quite good at rapping on the island yeah 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 nice nice and what's, what was it like growing up in sheerness um to be honest bro i'd it was all right, but it was more like I felt like there was more to life. So mm. that's why I think I always used to come to London anyway when I was younger. Every weekend I used to just come up here just to fuck about. From what you age? Know what I mean? um, from about, I was allowed to start going out on my own with no curfew when I was about 13 and a half, 14, because I dropped out of school and all of that. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so my mum just sort of said, do your thing. And then I started coming up here and just, yeah, just for something to do, bro, because there was so much more going on. Yeah. Um, and I used to, do, I knew a guy who had a studio, SP Studios in Plumstead. And because I was so inspired by the music scene and like our little music scene in the Southeast and that, I used to just go there and just chill there all day, just watching artists come and go and record their sessions. Cause nice. it just inspired me to like watch everyone do their thing and that. So yeah. So have you always kind of felt connected to music? A million percent bro. Yeah. Since yeah. I was like five years old, cause my dad, um, he put a lot of music in my life. Um, and again, he sort of was the one that put the seed in my head to come out of Sheerness and um, widen my horizons and come to like London and that more because he was he's very much like that. Yeah. Um, and from the time I was a little boy, he always sort of took me out to different places and, and showed me that the world is a big place, you know what I mean? Yeah, so growing up, what kind of artists were you listening to at the time that kind of inspired you? Um, if you had to name a few. In the beginning, for in terms of like rap and that, it was um, like G-Unit and G -Unit, like the okay. game and all of that, because I grew up in that era of like 50 Cent versus the game, 
and all of that. So I grew up wearing like baggy t-shirts and that bro, and big fake necklaces <laughs> from the market and that. Yeah. Um, that was that era that I grew up to, yeah. Um, like the beef era, innit, where everyone was like making diss tunes about each other and, you know, it was like, um, a, a, there weren't really such thing as a UK scene like that then. Yeah. It was more just America and everyone just copied what America was doing, um, like Jar Rule versus 50 Cent and all that was going on. And yeah, I was very inspired by that as a kid growing up. Okay, right. So you, you were in music before you even kind of popped off in the UK. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. And when, when did you kind of see it start happening in the UK for people? Uh, I sort of started to notice it as a subconscious thing watching Channel U yeah. in my nan's house because you know what it was? We couldn't afford Sky TV for a few months there, but my nan had it. So I used to always want to go around my nan's to watch Sky TV. Um, and Channel U was just one of them channels that stood out to me, yeah. where it was, there was just something about it which was more at home. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I was watching MTV Bass. I'm seeing these rappers with their big chains and cars and all of this. I'm watching um, Channel U and I'm seeing people who live just down the road shooting yeah. little net videos and that, you know what I mean? So I could relate to that more. It's, it stood out to me more and I had more time for it. So that was my thing. I need to watch Channel U like every day. I just wanted to watch Channel U. Streets, grime and life. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's a lot of people that will remember this. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was my life, bro. I literally just watched Channel U all day, every day. Um, and that was when I saw that the UK does have a scene mm. and that they, it was coming up, bro, gradually. You know what I mean? We had yeah. like Sway, Bashy, Ghetto, not Gets, because Gets didn't exist then. It was just Ghetto. Uh, Wretch 32, and like before they'd ever got any sort of real recognition. Yeah. Um, and it really inspired me, bro, that did to see that. You know what I mean? No, nah, definitely, so, yeah. definitely. Um, who were the first kind of rappers in Sheerness that you saw? Uh, basically just M. Dot, bro. He, I've got yeah. to say, he was really the first one, I think, for as, as far as I know, to, to stand up and sort of say, I'm doing music. And you know what it was? I feel like a lot of people was embarrassed to say they was doing music in Sheerness because it's like not a very big thing. So yeah. he was the first person who sort of stood up and said, I'm not just going to be this guy that spits in clubs and that when it's my turn to have the mic and that on sets and that, I'm actually going to do this properly. Um, and don't get me wrong, to start with, a lot of people did doubt him and a lot of people did take the piss, but we all know where he is now. Yeah. So, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, M Dot was the first one, I think, yeah, to do music in Sheerness. Yeah, cool. And you call it the suburbs? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's outside of London, isn't it? And it's not a city. So, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, suburbs, yeah. yeah. And is it hard networking there? That all for music and stuff like uh, that growing up? or Sort of, yeah, yeah. There's no real opportunities for music in Sheerness, bro. There's not. Mm. That's partly why I found myself coming to London a lot. Um, not just, obviously, I used to come here anyway for family and friends and that, but then doing the music thing, I did think, like, when I started taking it seriously, where is this going to take me and what sort of places am I going to have to go to? Um, and it's just all London, bro. London, to me, is the hub for music. Mm. Um, we are, like, London is, like, England's New York, is where yeah. I say it, or, like, RLA. And this is where the opportunities are, bro. If you're going to get anywhere, I think, with anything really like that, music, dancing, acting, you're going to have to come to London a lot to network, a million percent. Yeah, no, fair enough. And how did you meet M.R.? Um, I met him through my cousin because like when I was saying about Channel U, there was a, um, a couple, there was like a collective on um, Channel U called Esto M Hood Twins. And <laughs> it really stood out to me and I rated that tune. And then I, I bumped into my big cousin and he said, oh, who are you listening to at the moment? Like, who's inspiring you? So I said, oh, I like that tune by Esto M that's like on Channel U at the moment. And he like weren't really listening. And he's like, oh, I know him. And I was like, you know him? And he said, yeah, yeah, didn't you just say like, like M.R? I said, no, I said like, like Esto M. And he's like, oh, I just know this guy called M.R and he does like a bit of rapping and that around here. So I said, what? And obviously because rapping is such a rare thing at the time, especially in Sheerness, I yeah. said, what, there's another rapper that lives here? And he said, yeah, yeah. So then he's connected me with him. Obviously then he was like 22, 23. And I was a little boy, bro. I was like eight years old. <laughs> so to start oh, with, right. and I don't blame him because I wouldn't have done it. I mean, it didn't yeah. really pay me too much mind because obviously I was a little boy. And then as the years went on, we sort of saw more of each other and bumped into each other. And then, yeah, we just ended up in the studio one day and it kind of just happened. It weren't like a plan yeah. for us to link up. It was more like a subconscious <clears throat> thing over time. And then we just got closer and closer and ended up making a couple bangers and then, yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. All right, so obviously anyone that knows you knows that you love weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is it about weed for you? Um, Obviously, I do suffer from autism, um, PTSD from certain things that I've encountered. Mm. Um, and I suffer from really bad insomnia as well. So weed, to me, 
has always been, it really helps with my PTSD, really helps with my autism. And it's just one of them things where, you know what it is as well? Um, my dad has had his battles with drinking a lot mm. growing up. And I know a lot of people around me, um, just growing up in Sheerness and that, that have had different battles with like Class A and things like that. All the way down to like battles with, um, from battles with like cocaine and crack to battles with like um, antidepressants yeah. and things like that. So I sort of looked around me and I thought, all right, a lot of people that I know are addicted to a substance that is harmful to them. There's no way, you know what I mean? I believe that everyone needs a substance to get through, whether it be food, like cake, um, fried food, alcohol, um, cigarettes. Everyone in adult life, I believe, there is some substance that you will rely on to get you through in life. Now, yeah. I looked at all of these people on all these different substances, from pills to cocaine, and it weren't a bit of me, because I thought all of this stuff is man-made. All of it is, and you don't, you don't know what it's really doing to you. Um, when I look at people that have been addicted to alcohol their whole life, or people that have been addicted to Class A substances, and I look at people that have been addicted to cannabis, it speaks for itself. When you see someone that's been addicted to cannabis for 10 years, as opposed to someone who's been addicted to alcohol for 10 years, yeah. you can see you know, what drug is, is the worst one. Um, I believe that cannabis opens your mind and you can learn a lot from, from cannabis, you know, you can, um, it opens your mind to a lot of stuff. So a lot of stuff you wouldn't have had time for, you, you will now learn about. Um, whereas every other drug I sort of feel is different, the opposite to that, it will distract you from, from getting to where you need to be, etc. Whereas there is a lot of opportunities in the cannabis world, um, not in this country, but then it leads me on to, it's now legal a lot in a lot of other countries and there's a lot of jobbing opportunities, etc. There could mm. be a lot of money to be regulated from cannabis. Um, so all in all, all round, it, it is a great thing to me. Yeah. That's a good answer, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I mean, the only negative is that some people would say it's a gateway drug, would you, would you agree with that? It's a gateway drug to my fridge. Um, <laughs> apart from that, no, I believe that if you're gonna take other substances, yeah. the seed was already there. It's all to, to do with personality. Because if you put a line of cocaine in front of me now, I'm not going to be tempted. Whereas I know there's some people out there that have never tried cocaine before you put a line of coke in front of them, they're going to be tempted. Because it's just that personality and who they are. Um, so it just depends really whether you've got an addictive personality and whether, you've got, um, whether you're weak-minded, I guess. Because mm. um, no, I know a lot of people that have um, smoked weed their whole life and they've, they've not gone on to do other drugs, no. How long have you been smoking? Um, I've been smoking for about 11 years. I had my first spliff at my big cousin's house party when I was 14, so that was 2011. All right. um, and I just turned 14. And that really was just, um, I'll be real bright, it was just for banter, because I'd never smoked before, like even a cigarette. So I was like, ah, oh, let GC have a puff on the joint. <laughs> so I did, and I enjoyed it. I, you know what I mean? I, I experimented, yeah. I thought, let me see what this does. Mm -hmm. Gave me the giggles and all that, and I enjoyed it, bro. So I thought, yeah. You never, you never pulled a white, you had a bad experience? Um, a couple <laughs> times, yeah, especially growing up, like when I was a little boy, yeah. I tried to impress the olders a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and pulled a whitey. Um, <laughs> but apart from that now, not really, not really whitey. And the, the, the bad experiences more, were more when I got a bit older, so like in recent years, and I started fucking with edibles. Um, oh. That's where the, where the real experiences <laughs> are, bro, where it's like a trip. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's insane. So yeah, I've had a few mad experiences on that. What, um, what happened with edibles? All right, so I took 2,000 milligrams of edibles in 10 minutes just to experiment because everyone told me don't do that. That's a, a bad <laughs> idea. So I thought, right, I've got to do that just to see, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it was crazy, bro. I woke up laughing. And that's never happened before. <laughs> I woke myself up laughing. Um, and I was just high all day. Didn't matter how much I slept wow. or how much water I drank, this buzz was not shifting. Um, and I was like closing my eyes, bro, and seeing all patterns and shit. Like, um, it's almost like meeting the gods. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like an out of body experience, bro, where you sort of go to another dimension and that like, so yeah. And I'll be real, I wasn't entirely ready for that. Now, I know what to expect because I've done it a few times, but the first time, woo, I, I weren't <laughs> ready for it now. But you like edibles then? Yeah, I prefer yeah. smoking because yeah. I feel more in control when I smoke, but I don't mind an edible now, no. If it's um, an occasion, then yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that, like a gummy bear or like a... Uh... I prefer cake. like cakes, yeah. yeah. And I, I love Oreo chocolate. So yeah, an Oreo <laughs> cake, banging. Ah, fair enough, yeah. And what's your, what's your favorite strain of weed? Um, or do you have a couple? 
It's got to be OG Kush, bro. It's got to be OG Kush. And obviously, Ooh. I do have my own strain of weed. It took us three years to make the clone. Wow. Um, I can't tell you what we crossed because obviously it's, it's a secret. Yeah. But we crossed a few strains together to, to stabilize our own clone. And um, me and my guy Pot Rat a few years ago. And that was mainly because, bro, I couldn't keep smoking the shit that everyone else was smoking around my borough. Everyone else was just smoking Stardog and Ami. Um, whereas I love Kush. Um, and it medicates me now. Not every strain of weed is going to medicate you as a smoker. So that, see the people that just smoke anything and everything to get stoned. That's not a real weed smoker. Um, me, I smoke weed mm. as a medicine. Um, so it matters what strain I'm smoking. Um, me, I need a nice hybrid 60-40 um, sativa dominant really. Um, and it's got to be Kush, bro. OG Kush. Just something about them terpenes. If it's real ocean grown Kushna then yeah, there's just something that it sort of unlocks in my brain. It really puts my anxiety at ease. It's, it's like a medicine. Um, so that's why I ended up growing my own strain and looking into that because there's no point just smoking for the sake of it. You know what I mean? If I can't yeah. get, if you, if you love Kush and Kush medicates you, there's no point thinking I can't get no Kush today so I'm gonna go and get some Stardog because it's not gonna have the same Oh, effect. I see you mean, yeah. So yeah, um, it's gotta be OG Kush bro, really. Um, Head, headband is, is the one old school headband and when you smoke it it makes you sweat like you've got a headband on a sweat's called headband but that's not really around anymore you can't really get them, them yeah, genetics what's, like what's, that anymore I was going to ask what's headband yeah it's not really yeah. it's, it's sort of gone now it's old school is that a cush but, or yeah a cush yeah headband okay, OG right, yeah. yeah but anything <laughs> similar to that or leaning towards so at the moment I've been smoking a lot of Skywalker at the moment um, isn't that quite strong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Skywalker OG, yeah. yeah. Any sort of OG strain for me is where it's at. But yeah, the, the more leaning towards OG, obviously the better. Power plant? Um, I've, you know what? I, I've <laughs> never, it's mad you're saying that because I was looking at some different menus in Amsterdam just mm. to see like what they've got on offer at the moment because I'm meant to be going out there soon. And I see on loads of the, the menus, power plant, power plant. What is that, bro? I ain't never <laughs> smoked no weed in my life called power plant. Um, and I might be wrong, but from what I, I'm just assuming, it can't be that nice. Power plant, it can't be that nice, bro. You know what I mean? But yeah. Would you try it, though? Yeah, when I go to the yeah, dam, especially yeah. now we've had this conversation, I've got to try out this power plant, bro, yeah, when, I, yeah. when I go there, yeah. No, fair enough. Uh, what's, what's your strain called, then? Um, ginger Kush. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, because we're in the UK, I can't really do what I want with it, bro. I have to keep yeah. it under wraps, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, we was, gro we was growing some of it in, in the dam, you know what I mean, to, to cultivate it. Mm. But um, to do really what I want to do with it and the levels that I want to take it to, not yet possible. Okay, fair yeah. enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on the UK? Do you reckon it'll be legalised soon? Um, I don't think years? it'll be legalised soon because we live in capitalist Britain. Mm. where everything's just a money scam, bro, and there's too much money to be made out of cannabis. Um, if they do legalise it, they're going to regulate it in such a way that it's, it's going to be a money scam. It's not going to be for the people, bro, as like a medicine, you know what I mean? See, like in America, um, I believe it is, it's, can still be a bit of a money scam, don't get me wrong, because it's, it's a capitalist world, but it, there is a lot of medical factors as to why it's been legalised in, in America. Whereas here... I don't necessarily think they're going to look at it like that, bro. They're just going to look at how much money they can get out of it. Yeah. It's going to be like £50 a gram for a bit of haze. Um, and they'll just do a bit the same as they've done with the tobacco, bro, if they do legalise it and just whack up the prices on it, bro. Um, so, so it's still not going to, I believe, in this country get legalised in the way I want it to for the reasons that yeah. I want it to, if at all. Because this government, bro, is a shambles. Um, it really is a, a shambles, bro, you know what I mean? From time, they say that we're in a cost of living crisis right now. We're, we're not in a cost of living crisis, bro. We're not. It's a, it's a scam. Do you think Boris Johnson's in a cost of living crisis? Not at all. Not at all. And what about the general person? You don't think they're, they're struggling? Oh, yeah, a million percent. Yeah, yeah. Mm. People, people like us are struggling. <clears throat> the, the, um, the middle class, working class are struggling, bro. But the people above that, the people we're working for, yeah, that are not in a cost of living crisis, bro, not at all. You mean not everyone's feeling the pinch? It's nah, not, not at yeah. all. The yeah. businesses that we're working for, yeah, yeah. The, the big men in the suits that are, don't have to pay tax, yeah, minimal tax, because they're, they're getting a lot of the money that they, they make and they're putting it in offshore accounts, etc., so it don't get touched and don't get taxed. Mm. Um, they're the ones, they're not in a cost of living crisis, bro, they're, they're laughing at us. And that is, um, unfortunately, in this country, that is it. We're being laughed at by the government. It's all, it's all a big game to them, bro. They're all having a little laugh, you know what I mean? 
But so. hasn't, hasn't it always been like that? Like yeah, the, yeah, the but rich it's just, look after themselves. It's getting so much worse now, isn't it? <clears throat> so much worse now, and I'm seeing it. You know what I mean? Obviously, from I'm, I'm 25 years old, from from time I was born to now, I've just seen it get worse and worse and worse. But in in comparison, in comparison to saying that, do you think a lot of like young people have more opportunity through social media to get richer and to get yeah yeah get more but money? I feel like. Um, Partly, it, um, these big corporations are made to put a block on that. So you need money to do anything in life, bro. So imagine being 17 and you've got 30 quid for the day and you need 30 quid to get to, imagine it's going to cost 30 pounds to get from Sheerness to London because that's how much it costs. Mm. Now, imagine my man, he's, he lives in Sheerness, but he needs to get to London for a job opportunity. He's 17. That 30 pounds is a lot of money. That's what it's yeah. going to cost him to get here. So what about food and drink? then it's going to cost him a tenner just to go and have a Mackey's, bro. I mean, mm. food that's not even real. Food that's, like, processed and that. That's not even real food. Um, so we're definitely being <clears> laughed at because in order to, to get here an hour down the road and eat not even a big meal, a meal that's going to fill you up for, like, two hours of fake food, you're looking at 40 pound. Mm. And that's crazy. This time, um, what, 10, 15 years ago, I could have got here for 15 pound and had a McDonald's for a fiver. I'm saving yeah. myself 20 pound. You know what I mean? So um, I do feel like there is a lot of opportunities for the, for the younger generation, but I feel like the government are making it harder to achieve your goals and putting a block on things, um, generally because of the cost of living, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I listen to the radio a lot and I, I'm hearing that, you know, everything, the price of everything is going up. Anywhere you go, yeah, yeah. It's the crazy, price is bro. going up. And, and the person in the shop, you're going to know everyone's prices are going up. Yeah, it's but, insane. But are the wages? Um, oh no, I think the wages have gone up, but yeah. it's still a shambles. What is it? Ten pound fifty an hour um, is the minimum wage. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. <coughs> um, so you're working. That the whole concept of that anyway is is mad to me, because we're literally work. You go to work all day to work to afford to live somewhere um, that you can't stay really because you're always at work. So you you go to work all day to afford to pay for somewhere where you only get to sleep. You don't get to really spend any time there because you're always at work. And then the time that you do get to spend there True, yeah. is looked at as like some special time because it's your free time. It shouldn't be that, bro. You know what I mean? We've only got one life and mm. we're all here to, to live. You know what I mean? Not to exist, but to live, bro. And that's not that's why I hate the government so much, bro, because they're not, they're not trying to see us live. They're just trying to see us exist and be puppets that are going to... You know I mean, I've basically got to work all day for you so that I can sleep in a bed tonight. Mm. That's crazy. That's crazy. That should just be a normal, a normal right. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So yeah. No, fair enough. So you you dropped out of school quite early. Yeah, I dropped out of school when I was thirteen, bro. Um, it was just rubbish to me because uh, again, <laughs> school is designed by the government to teach you. That's what the idea of school is, isn't it? So that it can get you used to working for the man, get you used to taking orders. Um, schools, a lot of schools are built like prisons, you know, like the inside of it and the way it is. And that's basically what it is. It's, it's teaching you to be a yes man and basically, yep, yep, and follow them orders and do what you've got to do. From time, when you go to school, when you was in school, did you have to put your hand up and say, excuse me, can I go to the toilet, please? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Um, why are you asking, why would you ask for something as, as natural as that to go for a piss? That's, that's your human right, bro. You shouldn't have to ask that, but that's what they're teaching the kids. Um, it's a whole different kind of worms because they're now saying to children, how do you feel? Like you're a boy or a girl? What should I say? <laughs> Don't even get me started on that, bro, because that's a whole different kettle of fish. That's crazy. Um, when I was in school, we didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. Then things weren't going on in school. People weren't talking about them kind of things in school like that then. It's not really. Um, but that's even more reason why I believe ed the education <laughs> system shouldn't be finished because I believe there is a lot of things that, that good that can come from it, of course. But um, it needs to, needs to be looked at, bro. Um, the, the curriculum and the way it's run um, is insane to me. It's not right at all. And it basically teaches kids that they have to like obey, obey basically. And I can only do this because you've told me to. I can only go toilet because I've literally had to ask for permission and you've dismissed me and told me that I can go. That's crazy, bro. Like no one should live like that. So school, I believe again, is uh, almost like a scare factor and a control factor. Um, brought up, built up by the government in order to train you from young how to be that puppet which they want you to be. Um, school doesn't really teach you how to do your own thing mm. and how to own your own business. When I went to school, I was never taught how to make my own money and um, start my own business. I was taught how to make money for someone else and yeah. how to follow up 
other people's rules and how to do do as I'm told. Basically, school taught me to do as I'm told, and that's not how life should work, bro. You shouldn't always do as you're told. It's important to break boundaries and to go out of your way to go extra steps in life with things. School didn't ever really teach me that. So when I got to an age that I started to understand that, um, done that, done that, bro. I just wanted to focus on the music and um, I always knew from young that I wanted to be some sort of entertainer. So yeah. I just wanted to focus on that, bro, because school weren't teaching me that. Well, fair enough. I mean, after dropping out at 13, what did you, what did you do? What was the journey to music and everything else? Uh, for the first couple of years, bro, I'll be real. I was just what you call a dos of I was 13, so <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't smoke weed then, so I weren't like your typical, as you'd have like 13-year-old pothead that just sat at home. I really would just sit on the computer, bro, just studying the scene, because we had a little scene, you know what I mean? Um, so I would just sit at home watching that. We had like, um, then it, by the time I was like 14, Obviously, I dropped out when I was 13 and a half. So by the time I was 14, like six months later, we had like No Me TV, which mm. is like a platform for like the, the Southeast and that for like rappers and that. So what I just used there? to um, No Me TV. Oh, right, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I just used to sit there at home all day watching that, watching all the rap battles. I tried to go to a few of the rap battles. Um, used to just, like I say, go to SPs all the time and just sit around at his studio, just watching all the artists and what they was doing. Um, I just wanted to be surrounded by music or that culture. Yeah. as much as I could so um, that's all I really done bro until I was about 16 and then I was your typical like got a girlfriend and all of that you know what I mean started smoking and yeah no nah, fair enough yeah did you did you get kicked out or drop out uh, no nah, I dropped out bro the social yeah. services they tried to come around they tried to find my parents um, and tried to, to tell them off and speak to them all stern or shit like that and I <laughs> think that was just something like a rumour no, like like, like yeah. a scare. When they say, ah, oh, you have to go to school, otherwise the social services will put you in prison and fine you. It's real life. Yeah. Um, Truancy. Yeah. yeah. But I took control of that. I was a very, um, should we say, forward person for mm. 13. So when they come round, they was, I remember they was being very abrupt with my mum yeah. and talking to her in a type of way. And I always go on energy, bro. I always have since even when I was a little kid. So I just didn't like their energy. And I sort of took over the situation and said, look, don't talk to my mum like that. And don't, you know what I mean? I'm not going to school. It ain't happening. And some would say I was a bit of a little shit with it and a bit rebellious. But that's kind of how I had to be with it. Um, and I just said, there's no way. By that age then, I realised it was all this, you have to go to school. It's a scare. Yeah. Um, and I realised that there's not actually anything you have to do. You don't have to do anything apart from eat and drink, bro, and wash yourself. You know, like that. Apart from that, you don't really have to do anything in life. You know what I mean? So I definitely didn't have to sit um, in front of a, um, a whiteboard on a, a desk for mm. six hours a day learning how to be a government slave. Um, so when they said, ah, oh, you have to go to school. I said, no, I don't. I don't, I don't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to. So then, yeah, I just dropped out, bro. And that was it. No, fair enough. Um, you said that weed kind of helps you with um, PTSD and insomnia to do with what, sleeping? Definitely, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I've just been through a few madnesses in my life, ain't it? Everyone, yeah. bro, you know what I mean? Um, and I grew up around a bit of um, like gang culture and all of that. And I'll be real, bro, I'm a hippie. That's where the whole modern day hippie thing comes from. And I'm not built for I'm not a road man person, bro. I'm not built for all of that. But I did end up in a few situations that I weren't mentally prepared for mm. and uh, I weren't mentally ready for. So weed helped me um, fall back a lot from that. And a lot of people say that weed makes you paranoid, but if you use it in the right way, in the right situations, it will stop you from being paranoid. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes okay, right. you just have to chill out, bro, and stop stressing about things that are not always entirely in your control. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Um, does it help with creativity as well? You yeah, a million percent, bro, a million percent, yeah. yeah. I can't really put that into words, but anyone who gets on with weed and finds... Um, that they can use weed medicinally, they will get what I mean, bro. Definitely it opens up your mind, yeah, yeah. Mm. You got a lot of tattoos, you got a star. How would you describe the star? Um, the star for me originally was um, just because I'm very inspired by Wiz Khalifa and I liked the whole star power thing that he had going on because that was that time, that era of time really inspired me. Yeah. Um, but the actual, <laughs> partly another reason why I got the stars, why it means a lot to me, is because my dad is a communist. Um, I do have a lot of communist values. I don't entirely, I'm a socialist, but I wouldn't call myself a communist because there is a difference between a socialist and a communist. Um, mm. But I do have a lot of communist values and believe in that, a lot of that values. So uh, my dad also got kind of big in it back in his day and done a lot of stuff, done a lot of work with like the communist communities. Mm. So 
I was kind of proud of my dad, I suppose. And um, he really stands up for what he believes in, you know, and really makes a big thing out of it, much like I do with, with cannabis. So I suppose I just thought, yes, dad, you know what I mean? Big, big up yourself, dad. So yeah, I yeah. got a few stars for him, really, <laughs> just to say, like, yeah, because that's um, the communist oh, right. um, logo, like that sign is a, is a star with like, a hammer and sickle in it. Okay, right. Um, yeah. So I didn't get the hammer and sickle because, like I say, I didn't. Um, I don't really feel like I'm a full communist. Yeah. I just have a lot of uh, communist uh, values, but um, yeah, I was, you know, I mean, big up my dad. I got a few, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And some of the other tattoos. I um, there's some numbers there. And yeah, we got. <clears throat> what kind of inspires the tattoos? Uh, there's so many different things, bro. That inspire the tattoos. <laughs> Where do I start? Yeah, you got a lot, man. Yeah. 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 Um, what does that one on your, on your stomach mean? Is that this a house? Is, this or? is, um, all right, that's, that's my nan's mean. house. That's the house that I grew that's up in. That's your nan's house? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, that's Sheerness Town Clock. When you come to Sheerness, <laughs> um, there's the big town clock in the middle. Yeah. Um, and then there, that's to represent like a high rise um, because London and Sheerness. Yeah. I spent a lot of my life up and around that clock and I spent a lot of my life in and out of high rises and council flats. So that's kind of, yeah, just who I am. And then there's a couple of song lyrics and, and whatnot. And that, yeah, man, I've got a long way to go yet before I'm as full up as I want to be, but we're getting there. We're what's, getting what's, there. The, what's the rest of the goals? Have you got your legs back? Uh, no, I want to get my neck done next, bro. Next? The next okay, one, yeah. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. What's, what's going to be on the neck? We haven't decided yet. I don't know yet, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that's the, I'm in the process now of like working that out. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. You can get it done and, and then release it on your next album cover or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool, yeah. There's a lot of people that, would you say you clash with a lot of people in the industry sometimes? Uh, or you've had a few clashes or a few? Kind of sort of back when I was younger, you know what I mean? I don't really have time mm. for that anymore, bro. And a lot of people that I had problems with um, as a kid, like growing up in the music, we've sort of let it go now. So like yeah. when I was 16, 17, I did, there was a lot of animosity with me and a few other artists. But growing up over time, we've just sort of been like, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it dies because... Bro, if you're 24, 25 years old and you're in music beef, that's a bit, that's a bit <laughs> dead, bro. Do you know what I mean? There's no money yeah. in that. Um, I had a couple of battles with people for promotion and we both done it. We weren't really enemies. We just said, like, we'll have a little clash and that for promotion. But actual real beef, yeah, dead, dead. No, fair enough. And SP Studios? Um, SP Studios is was the hub yeah. to the fucking... Oh, dot knows what I'm on about. Yeah. Um, SP Studios at one point was like the hub to like the southeast Greenwich, and it basically was where it is. And it's, okay, right, right, um, right. Because yeah, I've heard a bit about him. Yeah, he don't really do it so much anymore. Obviously, he's now Shojon, um, oh, which right. is he, now he does music himself. <clears throat> um, he does a few other things. Like he's like an actor and all of that as well. Mm. But um, SP Strictly Paper was his original um, name, and he was. Uh, basically a studio engineer. I used to call him the, the UK's Dr. Dre. Okay, um, yeah. And he kind of built sort of, a, he didn't build, but he had a big um, impact on and a big part of building a scene, mm. um, which to me was like the local scene. Um, and there was, there was loads of us, bro. We had like Ashley Tragic, we had ODOT. Oh, um, right. There's so many of us, but and we all sort of used to come together. Um, we had Nomi TV, SP Studios, and it was kind of, yeah, like the hub of where we would sort of, how we would showcase our talent and, and do our thing. So that to me, SPs was the first place I really knew that sort of gave me a hub to sort of work on my craft and meet other people with similar interests to me, etc. So mm. SPs actually done a lot for me. Um, he's really helped me out over the years with a few opportunities and that. And I think he was one of the first people that met me. Um, I'm talking when I had like a skinhead and I, I was like 13, bro. Um, when I was a little boy, basically. Um, and he was one of the first people to really believe in me, bro. So, yeah, big off SP, bro, because he, he, he believed in me and we ended up going on to do a few things and that, you know? Um, you said you, you were skinhead before. <laughs> yeah, not a skinhead like that. Like, yeah, like no, you just had your head shaved. But I had my head yeah, shaved. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So now you're, um, you've grown your hair. Yeah, um, I've grown my hair for like the last eight, nine years, bro. And do you know what it is? I always wanted to have long hair. I just wasn't, like, wasn't allowed to. Mm. Um, again, that was partly why my school said that like boys weren't allowed to have long hair, and oh, if, they, right. if they do, they have to wear like a hair net. Yeah. And I, again, I thought that was crazy. I thought, all right, so now you're also telling me how I should look 
and that, do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was crazy to me. And I sort of looked around and I knew a few people that were males with, with long hair, etc. And I just thought, what a crazy thing to think that. Oh, if you're a boy, you should have short hair. And I was, nah. Um, and then as I got a bit older, I started realising the, the values of your hair. And I sort of read the whole Samson and Delilah story and all this. Nice, where he's yeah. like, got his power in his hair. And I, I got it, bro. Yeah, it makes sense. So I just sort of thought, yeah, I'm not really going to cut my hair, bro. I'm just going to let it do its thing. Um, I remember trying to cut my hair, I mean, trying to grow my hair in 2008. I must yeah. have been about 11, 12. And my dad physically pinned me to the floor and cut my hair off. Oh, man. Because school said that <laughs> I weren't allowed to, to grow it. So yeah. from the time I was like 17, 18, when I was 18, it was kind of an age where I sort of thought, all right, I'm 18. So it was that age where it was, I can do what I want now. Yeah, no yeah, one can really yeah. have an opinion on what I'm doing. This is, this is my life now. So that was kind of one of the first things that I thought, all right, what's one of them things that everyone sort of said I can never do? And yeah, grow my hair. So as soon as I, yeah, 17 really, started growing my hair out, yeah, yeah. Have you got dreads? Yeah, I got dreads, bro. Wow, oh, it's long, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see that before. Yeah, Wait, yeah. show me again, show me again. I didn't even see it. Wow, it's proper, yeah, it's proper dreads, yeah. man. Wow. Eight that, years, man. Eight years? Yeah. A little yeah. while. Oh. Do, you know, do you know a lot of other people with, with, um, who are ginger who have dreads? Uh, I do. But mm. I think only because I'm ginger with dreads. So obviously oh, on the right, computer, yeah. a lot of other people discover me and reach out to me and say, ah, oh, I'm ginger <laughs> with dreads as well. That's mad. Um, other than that, no, I don't. Like, not personally, but on the computer and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Do you compare Brighton to Sheenus before? As in, like you said, it's like a different kind of I would of brand. compare it in a sense of it's both, they're both a seaside town, innit? Yeah, yeah. But in terms of the energy and the experience of the place, no, 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 no. Okay, I know Brighton. there's a lot of LGBTQ plus in, in Brighton. Is there a lot of that in Sheerness as well? No, not, not the same, not the same. We live in a day and age now where that's everywhere, innit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't really... What are your thoughts? I don't really fuck with it, bro, to, to be honest with you. Um, all right, so if you're gay or, or lesbian, yeah. that's still not really something that I agree with and believe is a natural process. But, but, okay. but, everyone to their own do your thing, mm. yeah? But then to take it that step further, I mean, uh, you can identify as anything. No, nah, you can't. That's, that's bullshit, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> um, you're either a female or a male, innit? It's that, do you know what I mean? Or you can dress up as a, a female, yeah, then you're just a male dressed up as the same as like, um, yeah. I could dress up as, uh, I could dress up as Odot. Doesn't mean that I'm Odot, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm GC dressed up as Odot. Do you get it? Yeah. So all of this, ah, I must be, I'm a woman because I've changed my name and dressed up. Nah, nah, not at all, man. You're, you're born who you are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, no, and I, I understand, yeah. So that's my personal view. Everyone to their own, and I wouldn't discriminate someone and um, not talk to someone or something because of that. Mm. That's too small-minded for me. But in terms of actually, if we're, if we're going to get deep and, and go into it, then no, nah, I think it's a little bit, a little bit fucked up, bro. It's a little bit extreme. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, do you feel like people are kind of pushing the narrative and letting, them have, letting children have these thoughts from an early age? Yeah, definitely. And that's crazy to me. That's crazy mm. to me. So I believe that it's the same with, with religion. You should let your child get to a certain age where they start to understand and can look up this stuff and research it for themselves, mm. then get their own views and their, their own opinion on things. Um, again, even religion is a little bit different and I can vouch for it a little bit more. Whereas if your family have grown up following a religion, they're going to sort of try and inspire you and teach you to do the same yeah. So that's not the same as like sexuality and that, bro. How are you gonna? You're here because two people, a man and a woman, made you. So then it wouldn't make sense to me to make a make a, a a child and then raise that kid from young. So you can be wherever you want if you want to be a girl. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And it's it, a lot of yeah. the time I believe it is the parents' fault. Yeah, because there's a lot of snowflakes out there now, um, and all of this. It started, I believe, when like Taui and that first started coming out, and that, you know what I mean? Where people are all like, yeah, you know, it's, it's all of this, all of this shit. Not a bit of me, bro, at all. But like I say, everyone to their own, but pushing it on kids, I believe, is sickening. That's what I think about it, personally. Um, sexuality and that, I think to push that on kids, it's very perverted, um, very seedy. 
um, and I find it very sickening. But that's the same with anything sexualized. I mm. think shouldn't be shouldn't be introduced to you until you're like 14, 13, 14. Do you know what I mean? So the mm. fact that schools are doing that, that's partly why my future kid will not be going to school, bro. My future kid will be homeschooled. Um, because that, to me, I'm glad you asked me what I thought of that, because yeah. that, to me, is disgusting. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So you, you don't think um, a child could be born in the wrong sex or different sex or feel like they're um, a boy when they're a girl, etc.? Nah, bro, I just believe that's to do with environment. It's mm. to do with environment. I even believe that, like, um, <coughs> to a degree, like, depression is not really... It's a real thing. But it's not as real, it's, it's all to do with environment, bro, and what, do you know what I mean? Because um, I believe social media and um, basically, yeah, just social media and what's on the media today, social media on the computer, on the, on the TV, that's what, um, a lot of mental health because people feel like they have to be a certain person or fit a certain narrative. Mm. Um, so a lot of people get mentally ill through that. Um, there's so many different avenues now with, with the internet that weren't around like 40, 50 years ago. So I think mental health has got a lot worse um, in the last like 30, 20 years because of technology and how that's, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah. that ties in with it, you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people that say that they're, um, they're gay or, or transgender and all that, are, are, are sometimes, not always, but a lot of it, and especially the younger generation, is mental health, bro, they're just confused and mentally ill. That's all right, fair enough, yeah. 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 I mean, grow, are, you, are you religious or spiritual? Uh, no, not really, and I can... Right, I went to... A, I was forced to go to a C of E school, a Church of England school, where they taught right. me about Christianity. Mm. Let me just say, like, again, everyone said our own, but Bryce bullshit. There was no man that could turn water into wine. Walk on water. Um, if anything, it's just a hippie guy that got stoned with his mates one night and decided to write a book. You know what I mean? Um, it's it, none of that and you know what it is we've never seen a picture of Jesus bro and he's the, grandkids 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 ain't alive now nah. yeah it's been like 2,000 years ago, but there's no signs of his existence bro do you know what I mean um, whereas alright so if you if you're into the, the, the Rastafari religion Halle Selassie we know he was alive in, our, in, in my granddad's lifetime bro his grandchildren mm. are alive now you know what I mean? They, they exist now. So I know for a fact Halle Selassie's real. I can see pictures of him and that. Do you mm. know what I mean? So I can respect the Rastafari culture a lot more. Number one, because it's not contradicting. When you actually look and, and read up on this shit, it's not, and I have um, not entirely studied, but I have read a lot of the Holy Pibi. It's not contradictory, bro. A lot of their morals and what they live by, and that's real. And the reasons to a lot of their morals, and that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And the person that they're praising, is a real person. I know that I can type his name on Google Images and it comes up, pictures of him. Um, whereas Christianity, it is a contradiction, bro, a lot of it. it, it don't put me on the spot. I can't really think of anything off my head now because it's been years since I studied this because mm. like, it was in primary. But even as a little kid in primary school, I can remember being taught a lot of this stuff and thinking, it doesn't make sense. That's not right. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it's very contradictory. So I think that religion, especially Christianity, is put there... Again, it's all to do with mental health, bro, and it's to do with um, people that are like scared of dying and people that feel like they need um, reassurance, etc. I believe it's, it's that is something to, for people to hold on to. Um, it's an, uh, also, it's a way for people that have done bad in life to try and repent and feel like they're, they're making up for what they've done. Um, you don't have to have religion to do that, bro. You can just do that anyway, you know what I mean? Um, I, could, I know people that are Christians, but they're scumbags. Do you get it? They go and sniff cocaine and all of that and do like proper ungodly stuff. But, it's, yeah. oh, but I'm a Christian though. N nah. Um, being a good person doesn't matter about religion. That's in you and that's on you and, and your own principles and morals. And that to me isn't even to do, it is a lot to do with upbringing, but it's not entirely. Principles and morals are to do with you as a person and, and growing up and having your own mind and thinking, all right, I agree with that. I don't agree with that. That's right. That's wrong. Do you know what I mean? And no religion can really determine that, bro. That's on you. Do you know what I mean? So to me, in answer to your question, um, religion, I think, is, is overrated. Um, I think it's a, an excuse in a lot of situations. And 
if we're really going to take it there, I believe mostly if we're going to if we're going to go there in a lot of Rast Rastafarian um, morals and principles, um, a lot of that is very similar to Muslim principles and morals. What I've noticed um, with Rastafarian culture, so I could say I'm not religious, but I appreciate a lot of the principles of being a Muslim and being a Rastafarian. But I don't with Christianity, bro. I haven't really got no time for but that. What's, what's the simil similarities that you see? Um, so where people, they, they don't eat pork, because obviously I, I get that pork is, is a dirty thing. But when you see a pig, they're rolling their own shit, basically. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I get why that's not really, you know what I mean? Um, again, like we were saying about gays, you know what I mean? We were saying about that. Like I say, I believe that's not really a way of life. And that's a lot to do with mental health, etc. cetera. Um, growing your hair, et cetera. Um, and I do believe that, um, how can I explain it? <coughs> Everything that's around us now isn't godly, bro. That's not what's meant to be here. Whereas, you know what I mean? When you really go back and that, yeah, we're just meant to live off of nature, bro. That's why it's here. We're not meant to go McDonald's and kebab shop and that and live like that. Do you know what I mean? We're meant to go and pick fruits and that, bro, and live by the, the land. You know what I mean? Be people of the land. Um, but that's all to do with government <coughs> as well, bro. You know what I mean? That's the government have made sure that they've abolished that. But um, that is something that I've noticed that is the... the the bottom line to, the, to these two religions that I can really, yeah, of course, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a no-brainer to me, like, of course I believe in that. Um, whereas Christianity hit me with um, just generally the first, the first two things that I ever got told about Christianity was how this man died on a cross by getting nailed to a cross. Straight away that didn't sit well with me because I thought well, it wouldn't really happen, bro. You know what I mean? You'd be assassinated. You're not going to be hung on a cross. And, nah. Um, a star led... The, these two, these three wise men to a to a fucking a barn. You're crazy, bro. Like none of this stuff would have happened, bro. You know what I mean? It's mm. insane. You can't turn water into wine and walk on water and all this. And you're telling me that the, he, he could have done that what two thousand years ago, but he can't do it now with all the technology and that. There's it's all bollocks, bro. It's all bollocks. And like I said, I know that because I went to a C of E school and it was pushed upon us. Do you know what I mean? It was like you have to believe this. Why don't you believe it? Do you know what I mean? Bollocks, mm. bollocks. So yeah, I've, like I say, I've got a lot of time for the, for the Muslim and Rastafari culture, even though I, I don't actually follow it entirely. I've got a lot more time for that and there is a lot of aspects of it that I believe in. But Christianity, done out, um, it's a waste of money. It's, it's, it's all to do with money, bro, like I say, and war and bullshit. Um, much the same as, as um, the government, bro, and, and the whole fighting for oil and all this shit. It's the same sort of thing. It's mm. all bullshit and it's all a distraction from what's really important and what's real so you don't you do you believe in a god or a higher being um i believe in spirits so like people that died so like obviously Halle Selassie I was a real person mm -hmm. and he's dead now so his spirit is real yeah <coughs> so i believe that his spirit can guide us and that his energy can still when you die your energy don't go so like you radiate energy into the atmosphere in it so when you die that energy don't just go, it don't just dissolve, innit? I mean, you do, your, your body does, but your energy and your spirit stays, yeah? Um, and on depending... Earth? Huh? On Earth? Yeah, 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 of course, okay. yeah, yeah. And yeah. depending on the sort of soul you have and depending on what sort of person you are, yeah. depends on how long your energy is going to radiate. Because if I was someone that just sat here depressed all the time and was rude to people and sat there like, yeah, whatever, mm, you know what I mean? I haven't got a lot of energy about me. I'm not a very mm. big spirit, so... My energy is going to die quickly because I haven't got big energy. If you're an outgoing person that always tries to look on the bright side of things, tries to help others and tries to spread positivity, etc., your energy is going to shine, bro. And when you die, that's not going to die. Your energy will still exist. You get it? Yeah. So um, I do believe in energy and spirit share, especially like your close family members and that that died. Um, that spirits will look over you, bro, yeah, and guide you. Yeah, a million percent. Okay. Do you think that's what kind of like the afterlife is? That's yeah, what, a million that's what percent, after, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. What, what have you got planned for the next couple of years? What, what can we see from you? Um, I'm going to get this album out of the way, bro, and I'm going to go from there. I don't like sort of piling too much on my plate. Mm. Um, really, I've noticed that you never know in life because a door can open at any time. So I could drop this album and some crazy stuff could happen or I could drop it and nothing could really, you know what I mean? You never really yeah. know. Um, you just have to work hard and hope for the best. Um, so that's all I'm going to keep doing, bro, for the next two years. For the foreseeable, for the next 10 years, um, just going to keep working hard and taking every single opportunity that I can get um, and just keep working and keep working and yeah. 
Uh, what would you say inspires you in life? Um, just everyday life, bro. Seeing people struggle, um, seeing people make the best out of a bad situation, and seeing people come from nothing to something in life. Um, so just actual everyday life, bro, really does in inspire me, yeah. Okay. And what, what kind of keeps you motivated as well every day? Just the same things? Or? Yeah, and just that some crazy stuff has happened in my life that I never would have thought would have happened, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, little things down to like, um, there's certain shows that I've done, people come up to me in the street and ask for pictures with me and all of this. I never imagined that. To me, I'm not someone who's famous. I'm not someone who's like a big person or anything. So to even have like a couple people approach me in the street, I've had quite a few, but even yeah. if I just had one, I'd carry on getting out of bed every day for that. That's enough for me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what inspires me, bro. Seeing that my music and what I try and do don't fall on deaf ears. There is people out there that care. Um, and just seeing, seeing like people like M Dot and how far he's came and watching him do it, because I've literally watched him from pretty much the start, um, and quite a few other people, not just with music, but with general business. Um, <coughs> the way people can grow up and their minds expand and you see him go on to do mad stuff. Um, that's what inspires me, bro. Yeah, anything's possible, man. Anything is possible if you really, really want it, of course. No, nice, yeah. And uh, talking about music, what would be like the absolute dream collab? The dream collab would be with Wiz Khalifa, a million percent, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Wiz Khalifa's always kind of just been the man <laughs> to me. So, yeah, yeah. And you've met, you've met a few, I'd say, celebs? Yeah, yeah. Um, a few people that I grew up watching on TV and that I've got to smoke with and, and chill with. So that's mad to me. Um, really? Obviously, you've got Uncle Skinny, man. Big up Uncle Skinny, because it's mad. I remember buying um, a magazine with him on the front cover yeah. when I was like about, what, eight years old. And I would just go around his ass and chill with him and have a blaze and that with him. So that to me is mad. Um, he's a really wise soul. Skinny, he's got a lot of wisdom. Um, good person to go to for advice, you know what I mean? And he's helped me out quite a bit over the years and opened my mind up to it, to a lot of stuff. Um, Black the Ripper, rest in peace, the absolute legend. Um, he was always my favourite rapper before I knew him personally. Um, and then that just shows how humble he was because he literally met me as a fan. And because I was such a big supporter of his music, he sort of said, nah, but come through. Do you know what I mean? And he let me sort of like chill with him, get high with him and generally know him. Um, so that to me was quite cool and quite inspiring. That, um, I got to know him on a somewhat personal level um, and I still, he's probably the only person, bro, that's, that's dead that I can't believe it. There's a few people that I love and miss that are dead, but I can believe it. Does that make sense? It was that time. Yeah. There was a, a, an age where, you know what I mean, it was like in their 70s or whatever, people like my nan, etc. where I think, all right, it's unfortunate, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's not unbelievable. It's not unfair in a sense of, my nan had a good long life, bro, you know what I mean? She was at a respectable age to, to pass away, etc. Yeah. Um, Black the Ripper was a vegan. Um, he had a very healthy lifestyle. He only really drank water. He was 32 years old and he died of a heart attack. Um, so that to me is something that I still to this day can't quite fathom. Yeah. Um, and I think it's one of the only deaths um, in my life so far that I've witnessed that I still think, I still sit there and think, really? So yeah, mad. No, no, I understand. I know he was a, he was a big pioneer for music. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, and the cannabis, Marijuana, the cannabis industry. Yeah, in the UK. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, do you, do you think he? I know, I know they said heart attack, um, and some people have linked it to weed as well. I don't think he died of a heart attack at all, man. Okay. I think that's just what they said to, you know what I mean? Yeah, because he yeah. died abroad, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he died yeah. in Montserrat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and Big Nasty. Yeah, um, the connection with Big Nasty was basically because I had a show in Edmonton um, about five, six years ago. And it was like an open mic event. And I met someone there called Sarah Beebe. And she was working for Big Nasty at the time. I believe she still does. Um, for Dice Recordings. So she's like a talent scout. And she seen me perform that night. And then she sort of called me to one side and said, I want to work with you. I want to get you involved with Big Nasty, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of what happened, bro. I just went for a meeting um, and I built quite a good relationship with Sarah. And we went on to, at the time to do quite a lot of stuff. And I got signed to New Level, which was like, a, it still is, um, a record label uh, slash promotional company. And yeah, bro, um, the journey came to an end in the end, as a lot of journeys do. Um, but we did do a lot of stuff together, big up New Level, because a lot of stuff got done, bro, and it was where I'd say really started 
my career, like where I started taking things serious and where I started to get a foot in the door somewhat to things. So yeah, big up Big Nasty and big up New Level because yeah, they, they, things got made possible, bro, definitely, yeah. Would you rather be signed or rather do it independently? Um, I've been signed and I've released things, being signed and I've released things independent. I would say do it independently because you can do, you can, you can get just as far on your own as you can sign to a label. And you know what it is, when you achieve things when you're signed to a label, you think, oh yeah, but I achieved that because I was signed to that label, so they helped me get there. Yeah. See, when like, I toured the country, the shows weren't amazing. There was only like 300 people, 200 people that turned up because I'm not 50 cent, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying it like that, big up the people that turned up because it was amazing. But to know that you've done that yourself and you've not had like a promoter doing it for you and all of that. Um, obviously, I did have promoters help me out, but I didn't have a manager or a record company reaching out to these promoters for me. I had to send all these emails myself and, and do it all myself. So I don't know, bro, that was a bit, because I've done it both, in both ways. And I was a lot more proud of myself doing it the independent way, yeah, yeah. And what, what would be your advice to someone who's uh, a young person in Sheerness who wants to be a rapper like you? Um, just networking, isn't it? Networking is the key to everything, bro. Networking. Um, just get, if you're not working and you're bored and you've got nothing going on, if you've got tunes already, print them off. I know CDs ain't really a thing no more, but print them off into like, get like 500 CDs, go Camden My Street, bruv. Bang them out for like a pound each and do your thing. Um, go up to people in the street and show them and say, look, look, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm doing this and this. Um, sit on the train all day and go up to people on, on the train and say, oh, excuse me, I know that, I don't mean to be a pain, but I'm a musician, I'm trying to get my music heard. And do that for about 10 years and something will give, something will have to give at some point, bro, with anything um, inevitable. If you keep working at something, you, like I say, you might not be the next 50 Cent or the next Snoop Dogg, but you will inevitably get further than you was a year ago. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I would say to anyone, not just a younger, anyone trying to get anywhere in anything, network, bro, reach out to strangers and let them know. I think, I think that's really good advice, definitely, yeah. Because I think there's a, that, that part of, of that drive and push to do rap music has kind of died off a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know growing up in South East London, you see everyone selling their, their CDs and you yeah. go, you know, I ain't got no money, I'll just give me a pound or whatever. It was just to get their stuff I used to love there. that, bro, when that was going on, you know what I mean? And it's, it, it's died out now, isn't it? Because yeah. CDs and that are dying out. But um, that same logic, though, you know what I mean? If it's not a CD thing no more, give out USBs. Do you know what I mean? The, the, that logic still works. Promotion is key and networking, bro, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's lost now. They rely on social media, don't they? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But there's so much to be done still with social media and that networking. Yeah. But it, you can't just network on a computer. You have to get off your ass and go mm. and meet people and from the computer. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. so many avenues, bro. Yeah, just networking. That is the key word. Yeah. Just about having that drive. Yeah. Mm. All right. I mean, is there anything you want to talk about as well while we're here? Uh, not particularly, bro. Just look out for the album because it's coming, yeah. Yeah, um, come on. And it's the first project that I've um, co-produced all of it myself. Um, whereas, like, the mixtape and um, the last two mixtapes were not all my production or nothing really to do with me in that sense. Whereas this project is all, if I didn't produce it, I sat next to the producer while he made the beat and said, yeah, I want this, this. So it's all co-produced by me, all written and performed by me. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Any good features on there? Um, we've got my guy Sinchi on there. He um, produced a few tracks on, that on, on there as well. Um, he's a really talented guy, bro. Really, really talented doing his thing. Um, who else have I got on there? I'm trying to, I've got my guy Jack the Lad from, from Sheerness. Yeah. He's like a bit of an underground, rapper trying to do his thing in Shinner, so he's on there. Um, and we got my guy Z Kizzy on there as well. Okay. Um, and he's doing his thing. He's in a band called Escape the Box. He's a like, multi-genre artist, very talented. Yeah. Um, and we got a tune on there as well. There's a few different vibes, yeah. Cool. So if you go on your website, moderndayhippymusic.com, you can download the mixtape, right? Yep, yep. Okay, and what's the rest of your socials? Um, Instagram is Who is Ginger C. Um, Facebook is Ginger C with um, an underdash. Uh, Twitter, Ginger C again, everything G I N G A C um, with a space between the ginger and the C, obviously. And yeah, you, I'll come up, bro. Literally Google that and I'll come up. Cool, cool. I forgot to ask. <laughs> Do you have any conspiracy theories? Um, <laughs> all right, so when people say to me, consp a conspiracy to me yeah. is um, if you don't believe something's real, then it's a conspiracy, isn't it? So if yeah. you believe in a conspiracy, then it's not a conspiracy. Do you get it? So to me, a conspiracy <laughs> is only a conspiracy if you don't believe in it. 
Wait, yeah. Say that again. If you don't believe in the if you don't believe in, in conspiracy, if, if you believe in a conspiracy, okay. it's not really a conspiracy, is it? Do you get what I mean? Because you believe in it. It's only a conspiracy if you if you if you think it might not be real. <laughs> Do you get it? That's that's so, a good outlook. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I know global warming's a real thing, bro. Come on, bro. We're seeing it every year, innit? Come on, man. Alright, yes. so you believe in global warming? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> million percent. That's why it, it's getting hotter and hotter every every year. Um, and it's getting colder and colder every, every winter. And mm. that's why, I don't know if you noticed, but we've sort of, we ain't really had a summer. Like yeah. that. It's been, global warming's a real thing, bro. Look at the weather, look how it's changing and that. Um, so that's not, to me, that's not a conspiracy because it's real. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I get um, Flat Earth? Round Earth? I don't know. I don't know. I've never really, I can't call it, bro. No, I almost think that it can't be round because then everything would fall. But then no, because then if it's spinning all the time, nothing's going to fall because it's spinning. So if it's yeah. moving, nothing can fall up. Um, so it's a bit of a... <laughs> but like the lady said earlier, yeah, I don't care because I'm not going to fall off it and I'm still here. So yeah, <laughs> I won't lose no sleep over it. Bro. No, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, thank you very much. My G, love, it's man. Good, good interview. Good to speak to you.